Welcome to the Teaching Mathematics Mixtape Series, track number one. This one is entitled, The Gradual Release of Responsibility Sucks. I don't think you heard me. The Gradual Release of Responsibility Sucks. So a lot of you are saying, what do you mean? But you, I'm going to show you how The Gradual Release of Responsibility Sucks. Check out this movie clip from Apollo 13. Gene? We have a situation brewing with the carbon dioxide. We had a CO2 filter problem on the lunar module. Five filters on the limb. Which are meant for two guys for a day and a half. So I told the doctor. You're already repeat. up to eight on the gauges. Anything over 15 and you get impaired judgment, blackouts, the beginnings of brain asphyxia. What about the scrubbers on the command module? They take square cartridges. And the ones on the limb are round. <sighs> Tell me this isn't a government operation. It just isn't a contingency we've remotely looked at. Those CO2 levels are going to be getting toxic. Well, I suggest you gentlemen invent a way to put a square peg in a round hole. Rapidly. Okay, people, listen up. People upstairs handed us this one, and we got to come through. We got to find a way to make this fit into the hole for this. Using nothing but that. Let's get it organized. Okay, okay, let's build a filter. Maybe get some coffee going, too. Now you've seen that clip. Answer these questions for me. What formula or algorithm did the technicians use? What direct instruction did Gene provide to the technicians? How did Gene model his thinking? What worksheet did the technicians complete prior to completing the task? Did Gene gradually release responsibility? That movie clip is a real world task. So we have to think about this thing called the gradual release of responsibility and how it's preparing students for the real world. So here's a math task. Check this one out. Connie had 35 marbles. Juan gave her 18 more marbles. How many marbles does Connie have all together? When we use the gradual release of responsibility, what are you going to say? Oh, let's do what I do. Circle the numbers, 35, circle 18. Let's circle that key word all together. And what do we get? Bam, we're done. Good job, class. And then you come back and say, all right, I want you to try one on your own. And this is what happens. When they try one on their own, here's a problem. Max had 44 comic books. For his birthday, his dad gave him 19 more comic books. How many comic books does Max have all together? When you've done that gradual release of responsibility, they're going to do what you just did. I'm going to circle my numbers, 44, 19, underline all together, add the two, boom. Wrong. I do, we do, you do, your mama do, everybody do. It ain't what you need to do when you're teaching mathematics, period. And you're probably saying, Dr. Childs, why are you going against the gradual release of responsibility? Here's the problem. Do you even know where it came from? I'll give you a moment to think about it. So where did the gradual release of responsibility come from? When it comes to the gradual release of responsibility, a lot of people are going to say it came from Fisher and Frey. But when Fisher and Frey talked about the gradual release of responsibility, it was initially a literacy model. Then when you go back into the prior research from the 1970s, especially from Rosenshine, guess what? The direct instruction was for what? A literacy model. Over time, some genius principal went to a conference and said, oh my gosh, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I'm going to roll it out to every subject area, including math. Big, big mistake. The gradual release of responsibility is not appropriate for math because we strip students of their learning. You're probably saying, all right, Dr. C, you're telling me not to use it. What can I do? You can use the DCM method. What's the DCM method? Four-step process. Number one, pose a rich problem-solving task to students. Number two, allow students to work individually on the task. Number three, allow students to work in small groups. Number four, review the task whole group with students leading the discussion. Think about it for a moment. You give a rich task to students, let them work on it on their own so you can see individually how they're performing, let them do a turn and talk to the neighbor, and then come back whole group and discuss the task. 
That way, everything is on the students. You're building upon the experiences that students bring into the classroom setting. Now check this task out using the DCM method. Oh wait, before we check this task out, some of you are saying, what's DCM? What's the Dr. Childs method? I'm Dr. Childs, I got my own method. So coming back, let's look at this task. There are eight pennies in Antonio's bank. How many more pennies does he need to put in his bank to have 15 pennies all together? I can pose that rich problem solving task to students. Allow them to engage in it. Now, let's see how students actually solve that particular task. There were eight pennies in Antonio's bank. How many more pennies does he need to put in his bank to have 15 pennies all together? There were eight pennies in Sam's bank. How many more pennies does he need to put in his bank to have 15 all together? Now, with the DCM method, I can use this Antonio task, pose it to the students, let them work on it individually, see what problem solving strategies they come up with, see the different methods they're going to utilize. Because students have a wealth of knowledge, I just need to build upon it. I don't need to tell them how to do this task. They can use manipulatives, they can use drawings, they can use a lot of different things. My job is to just give them a rich enough task to work on. So, since I've told you the gradual release of responsibility sucks, let's recap. Instead of using the gradual release, release of responsibility, I recommend the DCM method. Pose the task to students and give them the opportunity to explore the task. Don't just say, hey, I do, you do, your mama do, everybody do, but it doesn't work, so it's a bunch of do, do. All right, that's for the next mixtape. Question of the day. What are your thoughts on the gradual release of responsibility? Comment below. What are your thoughts on the gradual release of responsibility? I want to thank you all for tuning in to track number one. Make sure you contact me, Dr. K. Childs. You can hit me up on social media at DRK Childs or you hit me up on my website, www.christopherchilds.com. Hit me up. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I love to hear your feedback, your thoughts. Welcome to the Teaching Mathematics Mixtape Series with your boy, Dr. Christopher J. Childs. I'm out. Yeah, yeah.